The only player who could speak French was David Sommeil, but he was living in Manchester. And they went in pre-season in Ireland. So the full team went except me. Yeah, it was awful. I, I, I used to come back to my hotel and cry because obviously I couldn't speak. It, it felt like everything was against us. The thing happened at the end of season was quite dodgy. To be cheated that way was quite hard to take. And I saw the guys started to walk towards me. A group of guys started to walk towards me. And my friend told me, I think it's time for us to run. Almost a fight in the dressing room. I think it was on the Monday between two players. And one of them came with a sword. A sword? This is the Chef United Way podcast. It's time to welcome a former Sheffield United striker from France, a powerful, combative finisher, a player who will be forever remembered for that goal against Arsenal. It's none other than Christian Nade. Welcome to the Sheffield United Way. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for welcoming me. Thank you for having me on your show. Thanks. I really appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. We were really excited to have you on. I was kind of hoping there was going to be a little bit of a Scottish twang to your French accent, <laughs> but <laughs> I don't no, think no. so. Is there ever have you ever said any any words in kind of a Scottish way? <laughs> I don't know. Like sometimes I'm trying like your Amy stuff like that. <laughs> Do you like understand it. if people say to you, "You care what I mean, Hen"? <laughs> yeah, you know what? As well as you sound, I can understand sometimes better than they understand themselves. Like yeah. people from Edinburgh sometimes can't understand people from Glasgow and people from Glasgow can't understand people from Edinburgh. And I can't understand both of them. Just Brilliant. Well yeah. done. <laughs> Bob. So, so um, let's start. Let's start by, first of all, obviously talking about your childhood growing up in Montmorency. <laughs> Is that correct? Montmorency, yes. Yeah, I said that, didn't I? I definitely Spot said that. On, Nick, yeah. you definitely said it exactly like that. I don't, Actually, don't I didn't it. even know what you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yeah, how, how was it growing up in um, in that suburb of Paris? Well, I'm just born there. I didn't grow up there. But um, it, was, it was it was quite good. My parents and my dad was uh, 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 <laughs> two amazing people uh, who raised like um, six uh, six kids. His child and they were like we were very close. It was it was a great atmosphere at home. Uh, my parents are very helpful. They, they took a lot of uh, homeless people from the street, bring them in the house. So we are never only my brother, sister, mom, and dad in the house. They were always stranger, and <laughs> they became aunt or aunt or uncles. Wow, wow. that yeah. is incredible! What great yeah, parents! Was, sorry, yeah, that was that was actually crazy. Like I I. Like I, I told them actually even just a few weeks ago to my sister, I, I don't think we've ever been only us together in the house, ever. Well, that's brilliant because that means you always had someone to play football with. Oh, always, yeah. Yeah, my big brother was was, was a player. My, my younger brother signed for Monaco. He was an amazing player. Um, <laughs> he signed for Monaco without being able to see the ball. He was a goalkeeper. <laughs> he had... It's the best reflexes you can ever add. So he could see the ball only at last second. And um, he signed for Monaco. Everything was fine until he get worse and worse. So he needed to have a surgery and they just they had the graph of eyes. So he's, he's got blue eyes, blue and green eyes now. Oh, wow. That is incredible. I feel like there's a book or a film in here <laughs> somewhere. Just, I could write a book about my life. It's crazy. You, you should, yeah. Well, we'll get to scratch the surface today. But did you always, Christian, want to be a footballer? Yeah, oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My brother, my, my dad was a coach, so obviously um, I'm born into football. And then my big brother was into it. He was the the star of his of his team, so I just wanted to follow his steps. And my dad, like, he didn't give me the choice. <laughs> and then uh, I was like watching uh, Pele, uh, VCR all the time because that's the way I, I really love football. Like I said, to my friend, the only I think the only human being I would see and cry would be Pele if I see him. And I was actually gutted because when I left um, Sheffield, I heard that he came watch a game. Yeah. And I was I actually, I think I cried that day. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, so, so tell us about kind of your start of your professional football career in France. You know what? Uh, I think football is, is, you need to be very, very lucky. 
to be very, very lucky. So when I was 17 and I was playing for this, this uh, team, professional team. But I was with playing with under 17. I've done very well. I scored, um, I think, 36 goals that season. I was one of the top goal scorers of, uh, of France, under 17. And then I went, 17 years old, so I was playing with under 18. But all my teammates went with a reserve team of the professionals. So I was, and, and I wasn't called to be played with the reserve team. And I was mad the full season. And, uh, and, my dad, and my dad came to me because I wasn't feeling well. He traveled, he came to see me and I said, you know what? This coach doesn't like me, but I would do anything. And I'm sure I would play the, in the first team before the end of season. And I just said that because I was angry. And he just wrote it. And uh, I think the last five games or like six games of the season, I have to, I've been told that the, the, the striker of the reserve team being injured, the, his, uh, his substitute being injured, the substitute of the substitute was injured. So I needed to go and play. And that was my first time I played. And that was also the first time that the first team coach manager came to watch the reserve team play. And uh, we score, we, the score was 2 2 and I scored two goals. Very nice. Doesn't yeah. get much better than that. <laughs> no. I, I got to say, which, when we think about those early days in France, I was reading that you represented France at under 21 level. So you must have played as you were growing up with some really good, maybe some of the best French players of your age group. Yeah. Who were some of the best players you played alongside, not, not just with France at under 21 level, but early in your career? I could say one, Blaise Matuidi. Yes, very of course, nice. played uh, for, I think, Saint-Étienne and uh, Paris Saint-Germain. Saint-Étienne, Paris Saint-Germain, won the World Cup. Uh, yeah, Blaise, uh, Patrice Evra. Nice. Uh, Jérémy Mathieu, played for Barcelona. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard a rumour that Jérémy Mathieu smoked. <laughs> smoke. Many players smoke. Many, did many. He, did he smoke, though? Is that true? I don't know. I don't know. Many players smoke. He can't wow. confirm nor deny, Hal. Okay. No, I, also, I, I also heard that Fabian Bartes smoked, but I don't know if that's true either. That's the truth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We can't confirm that one. Exclusive. All right. Well, let's get to the big move, which, of course, is one of the reasons you're on the Chef United way. How did the move to England in 2006 happen? I don't think I ever told this story to a... Uh, To actually uh, online or something it's, it's, it's actually it's, it's crazy and I don't even know if I should say it you should say it yeah you should <laughs> <laughs> um, I, when I arrived in Chief what happened is I was meant to sign for Choice and Choice gave me I was end of contract and they gave me the best contract they ever had for the club at the time because I was playing for the French national team in 2021 and I was a big prospect at the time So they give me the best contract, which I declined because at, at teams like uh, Bordeaux were interested, at Marseille were interested and in another team. So I said, look, it's not for me. I think uh, I've, I've done my time here and I'm willing to, to go somewhere else. And they wanted me as a substitute of, uh, I forgot the name, but Shamak who was meant to be the first striker and I was to be a substitute. And I was fine with that because I know I would learn a lot. And then I went home and, and two days after, I've been told that those teams who offered me a contract don't want me anymore. And I never understood why. And then I've been told that someone for choice contacted them and says silly stuff about me. So oh, I, went back, yeah, I went back to choice and I said, look, I'm accepting your contract. And they said, no, 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 no. We want you, but we will sign you only after the summer, after the preseason. So I want, we want you to go home Do your preseason when you're back. Uh, we're gonna go in preseason, and then we will send you. And that that broke my heart. I, I was like, "What I'm gonna do?" So I went back home, and one agent contacted me and said, "Look, there's a club who interested to sign you." Uh, I said, "Which club?" And said, um, "It's English club." I said, "What league?" I said, "I can't tell you." I would. Um, I said, "Well, who's the manager?" I said, "I can't tell you." And uh, he said, I will let you know, the coach, the manager is on, uh, on holiday. He come back next week. And as soon as he tell me, he, he come back, I will phone you. And I said, okay. So I waited and I remember, he phoned me on the, on the, on the Sunday and said, the, the, the coach is there. 
I say, okay, tell me the team. Say, I can't tell you. I say, what league? Say, Premier League. I'm like, oh, okay, just <laughs> don't talk rubbish. He phoned me back on, on Monday and say, okay, you're, you're, you need to go to Leeds Airport. Well, um, so your ticket at uh, Charles de Gaulle, go get your ticket and, um, and you will come in and I will meet you at Leeds. And I, and I told my mom, and my mom said, go. I said, no, I'm not going to go. That's lies. I'm not going to waste my time. Let me go play with my friends, try to get fit. And then that's it. She said, no, 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 you're going. I said, I'm not going. She put me in a car, put my stuff in the car, drove me to, to the airport. And I saw the ticket and I was, oh, okay, that's true. I arrived in Sheffield <laughs> and uh, I waited one hour. Uh, I arrived in Leeds, sorry. I arrived in Leeds. I waited one hour just outside the airport. The, the agent never came. He came like for one hour late, picked me up, drove me to Sheffield and said, look, you're going to sign for Sheffield United. Uh, we've got the contract. Uh, I'm not your real agent. That's when I can't, I, can't, I can't say much than this. I'm not your real agent, but you're going to sign for Sheffield United. And I said, all right. So the Wednesday, that was on Tuesday, the Wednesday. So I stay at the, um, is that, is that the, the Mercure Hotel? Or Novo Hotel? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, I was staying there. So the Wednesday morning, we went to the to Bramall Lane and the coach was there. And, he's, and I couldn't speak any English at the time. And, uh, you know, <laughs> Neil Warnock say, hi, so you're your new player? I'm like, uh, what, what are you saying? What are you saying? I, I didn't know. And he said something. Do you understand if I say, move your F as you must be fast? <laughs> and I'm like, what do you think? And so everybody in the room started to laugh. And he said, that's your contract. And I'm like, okay, I didn't even look anything. I just signed. Do you ever and look at he, how much money you were being paid? No. No, oh, I wow. no, I didn't look. I went to, um, he said, okay, let's go to the to the medical. So I went to the medical. The guy said, okay, it's fine. And I went back home on the Wednesday night. And on, a, and on a Thursday, I was uh, in a plane to go on holiday. That's huge. Was that Neil Warnock that you met then, you say, the coach? Yeah. <laughs> crazy, crazy. Um, so did you know who Sheffield United were before coming to England? I didn't even know I was signing for Sheffield United before I, I arrived at Bramall Lane, uh, before he drove me to, uh, to Sheffield. Yeah, because you you may not have known who we were because obviously we got promoted that the season before. So newly promoted side. Um, I, bet you were, I bet you were hoping that it was like Man United or Chelsea or someone no. like that deep down. No, <laughs> no, no, no. no. I, I, I would have known that. Uh, no, no, no. Honestly, I was, I, was, I was very, very happy. Surprised, but I was so, so happy and... Um, it made me. Le- I started to go home and remember and learn a lot about the club, about the city, and and um, <laughs> place to avoid and, and place to go. <laughs> yeah. if, if only we'd had the Chef United Way YouTube channel, Nick, back in two thousand and six, and Christian <laughs> would have been watching us to find out about Sheffield United. Oh yes, hundred oh, percent. Yeah, 100%. yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a bit weird that's to think that, isn't it? It is. <laughs> Um, so what, what do you remember from your debut? Uh, it was a friendly match against uh, Rotherham, is that right? So when I arrived at when I arrived at Sheffield, I was the coach didn't really know me at all. He was just being told and I was a good player and I could be a big prospect for the team. And so when I arrived, I arrived as a nine striker. And uh, yeah, I was the last striker of the team. That sounds nine. about right. Now, for, for Neil Warnock, that's believable. Yeah, there were like eight or seven strikers in front of me, and I was the last one. And I, uh, I can't even imagine there being that many because all I remember is three, four, wait, oh. no, four, five. <laughs> I'm just going through well, it now. Danny Weber, Adi Akin, Bae, Rob Hulse, Cabba, Steve Cabba. Cabba was gone by then. There were plenty, plenty. I was like, wow, I'm never going to play. <laughs> and, um, and uh, so they went in the, I remember the first day of the preseason, they've done, uh, so I arrived late because I didn't know where the, the, the running ground was. And I, and I d- never drove on the wrong side of, well, for me it was the wrong side of the road. So I didn't even know how to get there. And I think it's a stranger who showed me the way. Like he asked me to follow him. So I went, they arrived late and they were doing, and this, say, I put my, my trainers on and say, we do the beep test. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> first day beep test I just back for holidays it's gonna be hard <laughs> and I've done the beep test and I, 
well, in football, I've done 11. When everybody done 17, 18, 19, I stopped at 11. I couldn't breathe. <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, I remember then uh, Neil Warnock phoned my agent and said, what, what the f*** is that? <laughs> Who did you bring me here? <laughs> <laughs> and my, I, come, I came home and my agent told me that. I'm like, oh, my God. But he told, my agent told him, wait till he's got the ball in his feet and then you will see. <laughs> so the next day we touched the ball and then I was I was good. Uh, he was impressed. He told me that he was impressed. So I was like, okay, that's good. We've done a lot of physical things, which I was the last. And they went in preseason in Ireland. So the full team went except me. The full squad, the full group, like I don't know how many players we were, I think 24 or something. They all went except me. The coach said, we don't take you, you stay here. And I stayed in Sheffield and I had like... Um, two fitness coach, one would take me in the morning and one would take me in the afternoon to work with me. And I've been running the whole time they were in Ireland. Oh. Yeah, it was awful. I, I, I used to come back to my hotel and cry because obviously I couldn't speak. So I was like doing what they were asking me to do without saying anything. And it was very, very hard. And in France, we are not used to this intensity of, of work. So it was quite difficult for me. And uh, they came back and the coach said it's going to take 16 players and uh, they're going to um, a pre-season campaign in, in Holland. And I was, and uh, so I was, wasn't even meant to be there. But before that, there were a friendly game in Rotterdam and uh, he took the players. I wasn't in the squad again. And uh, while they were changing, they said, oh, Christian, you know what? Come in the squad. So I said, okay. So I changed I was, and, and I watched the game. I was on the bench my first time. And um, I think we were losing one then, and it was like 10 minutes to go, and he said, Christian, just come in. And then I, I started to get the ball, do what, what I, I knew, how to, what I could do, and then I scored, 1-1. One, one. And then he said, uh, okay, Christian, you come with us in, 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 uh, in Holland. And I was, I think, the 17th player, and then I never left the first team after that. Oh, wow. That's a, that's a great story, that, because it must have been yeah. horrible, like you said, coming to this country, not speaking any English, and then... Kind of, especially what Neil Warnick said about you about the running. Oh God, it must. I'm just horrible. thinking, Nick. Like there needs to be, and I'm sure there is now, but player liaison officer, someone who would have at least been able to get you to the training ground and teach you how to drive in this country and just help <laughs> you help you with the supermarket, so you understood what everything you picked up was because you don't speak the language, and someone uh -oh. to set you up with an interpreter initially and then get you English lessons. It just seems like obvious stuff. Everything was uh, hard for me. Like the food was different. Uh... The only player who could speak French was David Somay, but he was living in Manchester. So after uh, after every training session, he would talk with me for 10, 15 minutes and he would drive away. So at some point, uh, the club took me an um, a English teacher, which I had only for two weeks. Because, you know, after every pre-season training, you, are, you can't walk, you can't speak, you just want to sleep. And that's when someone come to your house and start to, to talk to you in English. And I, I don't have time for this. I just want to sleep. So uh, I told I told her no, I, I can't do that anymore. So I started to, um, like I said, reading about the club, reading about the city, uh, uh, everything I could watch on TV just to learn uh, English as fast as you can uh, as I can. I asked my best friend also to come and live with me so he could work, and then he will pick up the world and he will he will he will um, he will get at work and I will pick up the world. Then we get in training, come back home together, and just. Try to he let me he told me what he learned and I told him what I learned and that's the way I learned, he learned English. And now you can speak French, English, and Scottish. And Scottish, and I can sing as well. <laughs> oh well, we might ask you to do that to uh, close no. <laughs> to close the interview. You can sing us out. But how about your first competitive goal for the Blades? What are your memories of that? That was in the League Cup against uh, Berry at home. I don't. I didn't even know. I don't even know. <laughs> A few people have, a few players have said that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, am, I'm amazed that players don't remember the first goal for the club, but fair enough. I mean, you scored plenty in your career. I don't I just scored plenty, I just don't remember. I didn't even, I, I really thought that my first goal was against Arsenal. I didn't even remember this game. Well, don't, don't, I bet you remember that Arsenal one, don't you, though? Yeah, that's the one. I did. <laughs> well, well, let's one. talk about that then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah let's, let's move on to that one because... Uh, it was a pretty tense game, and, and 
I don't think we'd beaten one of the big sides that season until that game. I remember, I, I, I can't even remember us winning a, a, a big game like that ever in my lifetime. So it was absolutely brilliant. I remember because I, I worked at the ticket office, at the Sheffield United ticket office at that point, and we were sat at the bottom of the south stand on the left. So you will have ran past us, and we were going absolutely crazy. So run us through that goal. Um, first, to lose this game, we we never saw about winning this game. We just went to the game and just had game time and, and get fitness time as well. So that's why I don't think you put the strongest team yet on the on the on the on the pitch that that's day. That's true. Um, so we were not meant to win. We just like you know when you give sometimes the chance to the player who don't really play, they would give everything they had, and that's that's what happened. Me, me, and um, and um, Kazim, 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 Chad, like we are up front. And we just try to to run, do whatever, everything we could just to uh, to help our team to uh, to breathe because I know they were like getting balls after balls after balls, so it was quite difficult for them. So we tried to keep the ball when we could, and sometimes too much. I remember one time I kept the ball for ten or fifteen seconds in our own half, and <laughs> just try to let them breathe. But I actually killed myself, and I lost the ball, so they were quite mad. But um, yeah, so when the ball when the ball came. The f- because I think two or three minutes before, I had the same opportunity. The ball came and I kept it in my, my feet and he tried to come in front of me and I managed to turn. And I was like, okay, if one the ball come again, I know he's going to try to come in front of me. So I just need to let the ball go and then we see who's the fastest. And so when the ball came, my brother used to do that. I let the ball in between my legs and it was a race. And I was already on the right way. So it was easy for me to win. And then the finish, though. Don't play down the finish. What a finish that was. <laughs> Honestly, you know, it's so weird because in my head, the way I scored, I was in the middle of the pitch. It like, felt like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It felt like you were quite far out. Yes, it was, it was so weird. Like, and, uh, it's a way I, with, before I saw the image, I saw the I scored the ball with my head. <laughs> yeah. The issue wasn't in the right place when I stopped. Um, but yes, it was it was a great goal. It was a great goal. Yeah, you, you really are downplaying it because it was, for us, I think the highlight of the entire season and one of the greatest wins. It's it's strange when I think about victories against Arsenal. It's it's always players who aren't from from Britain. I think we beat them in '96 with Carl Viert, who was Australian. We beat them one nil with you in 2006-07 season. You're obviously from France, and then we beat them one nil at Bramall Lane with Lise yeah. Mousse who's also so, from France, uh, and they were all 1-0 as well. So that's the, <laughs> we've got the Indian sign over Arsenal at Bramall Lane. And that's the worst kind of defeat, you know, when you lose just by one goal. <laughs> uh, what do you remember from the back end of that season? Kind of like, obviously, we went and beat West Ham 3-0. We, as fans, thought that that was it. We were going to stay up. Um, and then we kind of tumbled down a little bit, didn't we? Because we were quite far ahead of West Ham. Uh, and then we ended up going down. What do you remember the back end of that season? It, I feel like everything was against us. Mm. Uh, the thing happened at the end of season was quite dodgy. Um, yeah, a you know, little bit, little bit, yeah, very, <laughs> yeah, it's very, very dodgy. Uh, but you know, we were on the pitch. We gave everything we had. Every single players were coming on out of the pitch and just on the pitch and just. <sighs> Try to win every games, and uh, to be cheated that way was quite um, hard to take. Mm-hmm. It was very, very hard to take. I remember in the dressing room, nobody was talking, uh, nobody cried, but everybody had their heads down. The coach just said something like, "I think he, he couldn't believe it with the group we had, the energy we had in training and on the pitch." It was, honestly, it's, it's the saddest time, of, the saddest day of my career. From far. Mm. Um, so, what was Neil Warnock like to work for? You didn't have the best of starts with him, with him uh, giving you a bit of grief. But what what was he like to work for? <laughs> I play. I work under a lot of manager. He's the best manager I ever worked with. From far. Wow. Far. Yeah. He, That's he's not here. Uh, he's not the best t- tactician. No, it's not the best tactician. Not the best technician. He wasn't even coming in training station. <laughs> <laughs> Was it um, Kevin Blackwell who took training? Yeah, Kevin Blackwell yeah. Or, or Stephen McCall. 
Oh, oh, Stuart, Stuart McCall, yeah. incredible yeah. midfielder as well. Yeah. He used, I remember he used to come on this. So he wasn't there on the Monday, he wasn't there on the Tuesday. Obviously, we're off on the Wednesday. He will come Thursday, last 30 minutes, and then he would take the session on the Friday. That's all. That's, that's all he, for Neil. That's all for Neil. He, like I said, he wasn't the best tactician, and he, he know that. He wasn't the best tactician. But the, the, the motivation the guy can give you, you could fight for the guy, honestly. He, he, it's like if a player is, uh, is 80, he will give you, and he, he can push the player to reach 100%. He give every, the way he's, he's passionate and like there's no word to describe how the guy wants to win. And he managed to, to, uh, to transfer his energy into the players, into the, the team. And, and, uh, and I never felt something like this before. I, I could have... I was about to say, I could have fight for the guy, even just in the street. If someone I hear someone <laughs> says he fight for him, I would fight. He was just an amazing yeah. guy. Well, Patrick Sufo did exactly that. Uh, so <laughs> I think that we've we've seen that before. I was going to ask you how he compared with other managers, but you've already answered it. Oh, yeah, no, this is no comparison. I remember a game we were playing in, um, I forgot the name of the team, and he had an argument on the pitch, and I, and I jumped, and I wanted to punch the guy. A reading. It was a reading. I thought it'd be reading. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I just went and like I needed to protect. I don't know why. It just it was amazing. Amazing guy. Uh, before we talk about your um, your teammates, uh, I want to know about Kevin Blackwell because everybody says, well, it's, I wouldn't say it's 50-50. It's very 75 people hate Kevin Blackwell and 25 people actually enjoy his training. How did you find Kevin Blackwell? Oh, the, the training was. You know, it's, it's different because I'm I'm, play, I'm coming from France, where the training session is always very very tactic. You know, it's just tactic all the time. All you do is um, how you move, if the ball is there, where you have to go, and and all those things. And that's why sometimes the league game is quite boring because it's very slow. Everybody is seeing more than they play. Mm. And uh, and when you go and test, all you think is just fight fight, fight all the time. It's, 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 it's different. And then you need to, I remember I needed to change my body type. So I was in the gym with Adi Akinbi all the time just to get bigger because it was so physical. And that was the transition all the time. You need to, even you see like Jagged Kai, he wasn't the strongest, but he was so strong. Mm. So, so strong. And that's because of the training session. So I, it made me feel good. I liked it. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, so your teammates, what one, what was the dressing room like at Sheffield Giant? Was it a good one? Was it a bad one? And uh, who were your friends uh, in the dressing room? Well, I was friends with everybody because I couldn't speak English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was smiling to everybody. They could have said anything. All I know is they started to call me Nemo. Uh, uh, Limo, sorry, Nemo. And then everybody started call, call me Nemo. And, and then... It was nice. Everybody was nice to me. Obviously, they knew I couldn't speak French, so they helped me when they could. <laughs> I've got so many things I could say, but the, because I couldn't speak French, they put me in some trouble sometimes. Um, All right. Yeah, I couldn't say. I could. I could say without. Um, I could say a small story without saying the names. All okay. right. I mean, I'm sure Rob Kozluk is involved, but okay. <laughs> no, it's not. It was crazy, but it's not. If if you can interview other players, I will tell you one day there was um, an un- almost a fight in the dressing room. I think it was on the Monday between two players, and one of them came with a sword. A sword? I went between the two of them without seeing the sword. <laughs> Good to <laughs> say as well. <laughs> and, and Try to to separate them, and uh, and um, and Weber came and said, "Pull me, pull me away," and see. Can you not see this? I said, what? Can't, we can't let them fight. And he said, no, 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 come here, come, come here. Look, look. And I saw the sword. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. That's not for me. And, and then uh, someone said, uh, the coach coming, so they just stopped. A, but, yeah. a sword? <laughs> a sword. <laughs> uh, is, a sword. Is that a euphemism? Or is that an actual... Is it a no, sword? No, actually a sword, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know what to say to that. I'm, I'm completely <laughs> stunned. I mean, we need more on this. Is it was it like a, a, a straight sword? I don't know anything about swords. Or was it like a, a was it like a samurai sword? <laughs> that was a knife. The samurai. That was the thing. Wow. And what was done with this sword? Was it just like a 
stay away? Or was it like... No, uh, I, I think he, the, the person knew that he was about to go down so this person can prepare. Was it a so, joke? It doesn't sound no, like no, a no, joke. Was, no, no, it was serious. Something happened at the weekend. Um, something happened between them in the, at the weekend. So the only time they would see each other after that was on Monday in training. And that's what happened. I mean, that's the only way you sort out a disagreement. I think that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> that's just yeah. crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, Nick asked you what the dressing room was like, and I was I was hoping you'd obviously say it was a great dressing room. We've got to admit <laughs> that doesn't sound like a great dressing room. No, that's to be fair. That's the only time you know in football there's a lot of fight and stuff like that in the dressing room. That's the only time there were big arguments in the dressing room. Yeah, yeah. That's if, pretty in big. Doubt, if in doubt, if in doubt, have you sort out? That's the worst. <laughs> that's the worst I've seen as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, what did you make to life? in England and Sheffield in particular? I mean, so different to what you'd known in yeah. France. Yeah. You know, I, I came in Sheffield, I think I was 22. So I was becoming an adult. Um, so I was already like looking for myself and then uh, I was at home and still looking for myself. So when you change country, and you don't know the language, it's even harder. So it, it was quite tough for me. Um, and I was... People knew me in the city, so I could do, like nobody will uh, will come and uh, like they would take me like no one, and I was fine with that. But when you came and then you got like some attention, which I, I wasn't used to, it was quite weird for me. Like I think constant attention everywhere I would go, even if I wanted to buy something, it was nice, but it was um, difficult and fortunate to keep your your feet on the ground. Yeah, I can imagine that. Um, so, so have you got any funny stories about anyone coming up to you asking for for any weird requests or anything? Oh, I've got <laughs> weird. Did someone come up to you with a sword? <laughs> no, sign <laughs> this. No. I've been chased. I've, I've been yeah. People chased me. I was in the wrong part of the city. Uh, oh. yeah. yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know that someone <laughs> brought me there, and. Some guy came to me. There were a group of ten guys came into the pub, and, and the guy said, "Do you you're the wrong place?" And I didn't know what it was. So I said, "What do you mean? I'm just having friends, and we have a drink." And the guy said, uh, um, "My friend, I think is going to do something. You better leave now." Oh and I'm like, God. "I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm not going anywhere." And I saw the guy started to walk towards me. A group of guys started to walk towards me, and my friend told me, "I think it's time for us to run." <laughs> and I'm like, "What do you want to run?" And from far, the guys threw um, uh, a glass at us. So my friend started to, to take off, but he grabbed me and then started to run. Those guys were running after us. <laughs> no chance they could have catch us anyway. But yeah, they tried. Uh, that... I'm, spe- I'm stunned. <laughs> uh, w- 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 I wasn't expecting these stories. So, I'm sorry, Nick, I jumped in there. But it's fine. When you say you're in the wrong part of town, yeah. is that just a bad part of town? Or were these guys like... Sheffield Wednesday fans. And that's I, was I, the, I was actually in the Sheffield Wednesday pub without knowing. That's what oh, I right. thought, yeah. Yeah. Oh, mad. That is crazy. That seems excessive. I've Go got on. another, I've got the request. One guy came to me in the bar and said, please, can you go out with my sister? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Love that. I mean, what did yeah. you say? No, I, I laughed. I wanted to, but I, did, but I said, no, I can't. Oh, you know, you should, and we've been happily married ever since. <laughs> I, uh, wanted, I can't do that. That's, this is brilliant. The, the new uh, Christian has just illuminated his surroundings, if you're wondering why the picture <laughs> looks slightly different. So tell us right. about starting your life in Scotland with Hearts. That was in August 2007. The thing, when I came to Hearts, like I say, when you know you need to keep your head, your, your feet on the ground, well, I didn't because, you know, I come from Premiership team, um, where I start, I, I, I was all right. So people, when I came, they expected so much from me, but they forgot that I was still a young kid, still developing. So they, they asked me for so much and, and I wasn't ready to deliver. I was still, uh, I was still an impact player. And I, I wasn't, I was, um, at the time when I was in Sheffield, Roberts was the main striker, a target man, and I was a player who doing a run, running around him doing the runs. And when they, they when I arrived in Chiffy uh, Hearts, they put me as a, as a target man, which I never played before. Mm. And uh, I needed to change completely my game. And, and in Scotland, when they play, they, <laughs> they don't joke. Like, 
the guy can run into you like you're not there. And they keep kicking you all the time. And, and I needed to change my body type again. So I became like stronger. And when you get stronger, you don't run as fast as you used to. And, and I had to change my game. And I was now back in the goal all the time. And it was something that I never done before. And it was, it, it was very, very hard for me. Yeah, I can imagine that. Um, didn't is it true that Neil Warnock tried to sign you when uh, he was at Crystal Palace? Yes, he signed. He he, uh, he made an offer. I think it was seven hundred and fifty thousand. The first six months after the first six months, I was at. Uh, what, what was the deal? Was he told me to sign for house, and uh, he knew and he would go to to Crystal Palace and he would take me at uh, the transfer window in January, so that was the deal. Wow! So when the, the transfer window arrived in January, he made the offer like he promised. And Hearts didn't keep the hand of the, the, the deal. So I had to stay at Hearts. Right, okay. But they trying to get more money or just wanted to keep you? They wanted to kick me. They didn't want at all. Like, you've done an offer every, for two years, every six months, and then they didn't let me go. Do you ever think, Christian, how different your football career would have been if you'd gone to London? Oh, yeah, 100%, yeah. Because, you know, when you, your head is not there anymore, you can't play, you can't play your best football. Mm. And, and I wanted to leave every six months. I was begging the, the chairman to let me go. And he didn't want to say, I don't, not that I didn't enjoy, but I, my head was somewhere else. I wanted, and I wanted to play for this manager. I wanted to obviously back mm. in a championship team. And they didn't want to let me go. So I was like, it, it was hard. It was very hard. Can, yeah, can we we'll, just... we'll never truly know, will we, though, you know, how you would have performed, of course, in the championship. Yeah. It might have been a league that was perfect for you by that stage when you had still had the pace. And you were yeah. strong. Yeah, you, you never know. I don't want to say it, but I was I was really look I remember this. <laughs> you know, when I, I left Sheffield, I never told this. Um, so when I was at, at Sheffield, <clears throat> uh Brian Rosson got his own player, so he said he don't need me. And I'm like, I start I ended up this, the season quite well. Why you just come and don't even don't give me even the time. To show you that I can play, say no, I don't need you. So you, you go with the reserve team. So I was with the reserve team, training with them, doing everything. But sometimes when you need a player, will come get me. Come the first team, so I will come train with them. When the, the exercise is finished, you go back with the reserve team. So he didn't treat me very well. And um, one day, when he came to me and said, um, you need to go back with the first team and say, I'm not going with the first team. If I go with the first team, I stay with the first team. You can't keep messing me around. You know, you can't keep doing that. And um, at the end of the session, Brian Rosson called, called me and said, come in the office. I said, okay. He said, why did you uh, slap the Brad, Brad kid? I'm like, what are you talking about? He said, yes, why did you slap him? I said, what are you talking about? I never slapped anybody. Don't talk with me. Don't, don't stop something like that. He was like, no, I got my sword out. And I... <laughs> <laughs> he said, uh, he said, oh, you know what? Okay, forget about this. He says the Turkish club want to sign you and, and we want you to go. He said, I'm not going to no Turkish club. I'm staying here. He said, but you can go on loan. And then said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying here. And uh, that's when Nilwana contacted me and said, come. And so I started to go to his house regularly. He said, come. And I had dinner with him, lunch. And he said, we need you. We need to play. I'm going to sign for in January for... Uh, for Crystal Palace, but you need first team appearance. And uh, I guess you want a bit in, in, uh, in Sheffield. So go sign for Hearts, do you six months, and then I will take you with me in, in things. And he kept the side of bargain, but yeah. So I stayed in, in, uh, uh, in Sheffield for um, Hearts for three years. It's a long, it's a long time if you weren't truly happy uh, the whole time at Hearts when yeah. you were initially. But after Hearts, you had spells in Cyprus and in Thailand. So what were those experiences like? Before we get into that, I need to say that I've been offered a new contract at Hearts, which are signed. And you know, when you're not well in your head, you know, you, you, um, you, your head can just turn like this. And one day in the dressing room, one of the players started to be very, very disrespectful. I really want to know that I told him to stop many times. Like for five minutes, they say, you know what, you're right, stop it. I'm sorry, stop it many times, but he keep being abusive. And then I punched the guy and fainted. And uh, that's when Hearts came to me and said, look, the contract that you signed, we didn't send it to the SPFL. 
So your contract is not valid. So we want to offer you a new contract because no club will take you with um, this kind of behavior. So we want to put a contract divided by two. And I said, I already put my contract lower. I'm not going to do it again. So stop, stop doing this. I said, I'm not going to sign. And then I went to Cyprus. And as soon as I get there, I get injured. So I've not been playing loads. In Cyprus, they kind of like, you're not playing. We don't need you away. So after six months, I wasn't even going to anything, so I just left. And then um, I went to Thailand. I went, first, I went to South Africa, which was amazing. But I went to Cape Town where you can't breathe. You can't, like, because it's, um, it's an altitude, so it was difficult for me to breathe. So after every sprint, I would take like two or three minutes to recover. So it, I went on trying, it didn't work. And then I went to Vietnam and I was amazing. Uh, played the game, we won six nails, I scored six goals. End of, <laughs> yeah. It's like playing FIFA. <laughs> end of the training, end of the game, the guy said, oh, we will send your other, the, the other striker who was from Brazil. And I'm like, I just got six goals. And he said, no, 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 we will take you. But there is just like who you know and who, um, if they sign you, you how much you're going to give to the coach. So I said, no, it's fine. So I just wanted to stop. And then this guy called me in Thailand and said, look, I've got a club for you. You need to come. So I went there. Obviously, it wasn't the time to sign. So I trained with the team for two weeks. And they said, we can't sign you. We can't sign you. We need to wait. And I said, look, I'm tired. I'm going home. And another club called me and said, I want, we, want you to, we want to see you. And I went there. I trained half an hour. And after half an hour, the coach said, oh, the owner wants to see you. So during the training session, they took me out and I signed my contract while I was doing the training session. And then I stayed there for two and a half years. And you were, you, were, you were good there. I looked at your goal return. You did very well. Yeah, I've done, I've done very, very well there. I just needed the opportunity and just let people let me play the way I wanted to play. And that's what they gave me there. They just say, okay, play, enjoy. Don't need to just to... to. When I came in Scotland, they say, okay, the, you need to defend. So you need to run everywhere. And and that's the thing is, as I was in Sheffield, the coach never... He took you on the pitch, do what you do. Don't give me any other indication or don't come in and press or don't come in and defend. All I want you, I want you to be able to to, uh, to help or to score or to score yourself. That's, and that's why I, so I was like forward. I was oriented just to go forward. But when you mm. come in Sheffield and, and in um, in Hearts and they told me, okay, the left back is going, you need to follow him with my, my weight. <laughs> I follow him, I can't come back. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I had a lot of abuse because of this as well. What's up? Yeah. So obviously you've just said how much you, you enjoy playing football in Thailand. Um, yeah. Would you say that is the place where you enjoy playing football the most or or was it in England or Scotland or, or where would you say? No, it, it was in, it was, um, it wasn't Sheffield. I'm not going to lie. It was Sheffield. I loved it. Oh, I just, think he's just saying this just for uh, the channel. No, no, I no, believe you, Christian. <laughs> you know why I loved it? Because mainly because of Nirvana. I just, I, I really love the guy. I love the man. He's just, he's an amazing man. He was, I was on the phone with him again like a few months ago. He's, he's just, he's an amazing man. He cares about his players. Mm. It's a yeah. real shame that, that you didn't get to sign for Crystal Palace for him as well. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm thinking that. Um, you've spoken before about some of the struggles in your life. Are you okay to talk about these now? Maybe in the hope of reaching others who might be watching and maybe they're going through some, some similar issues? No, I'm fine. I'm fine now. Good, yeah. good. Are you happy to talk about what happened to you before? Hmm? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What, what happened, Christian? Uh, I left my family when I was 12 because I was starting to play for a pre-football academy, so I was coming back over the weekend. And, uh, and at 15 or 16, I just left for good and I never came back home. So I, I always feel a feeling uh, an emptiness in my life where I wanted to be closer to my brother. And so even though we are very close, but I did never spend time with them. I never spent time with my mom and dad. And, um, and I guess it was eight years and I thought it was. And, uh, and I noticed and I, was, I kept thinking about it and I wanted to be with them. And, and when I used to come back home, I never felt like I was home, even though they made me feel at home. But you know, when you're in a place where your brother and sister laugh about the same thing, but I don't understand, they will... Um, so we, I don't know. I was thinking, I told my brother two, two weeks ago, I said, he said, every time 
when you used to come home, uh, when you are away, you say you want to come home, you want to come home, but as soon as you're home, you just disappear. And I told him it's because as soon as I get home, I don't feel at home. I'm, I don't feel like I'm enjoying you guys. I don't play with you. I don't laugh with you when I'm on holiday. You're not on holiday, so you do your stuff. I, I call you at the weekend, you all, all the family together having fun, and I'm not there. All I can do is just video chat and it, it was it was difficult and at some point I, I couldn't take it anymore and then i tried to um to end my life that's that's really sad that is really really sad yeah so so how are you with your mental health at the moment uh christian uh no no i'm fine you know i'm fine um, Good. um it, and how, how did you get how did you get from there to, to here you know, it, it was, um, it was, it, it's weird because between the first, the time where I tried to end my life and today there's so many bad things happened to me. So I could have actually tried to end it like so many times. Um, but um, I started to, um, to um, when this happened the next day, I was scared and the, the to be in the paper and and people laugh about about what I've done because I saw that what would be the first reaction of people and I was scared that the police would call the my club and and call the paper and so um, I went forward and I spoke to my coach and I told him what happened and he said someone will come to your house well he tried to to help me and they look someone will come to your house and talk to you so I waited all day and someone came to my house around 11, and he was a pastor. And my family were, were quite religious, but because I didn't grow up with them, I didn't, I knew without knowing. And uh, we started to talk, talk about God, and and I started to feel stronger, stronger uh, being by myself. And, uh, and I started to go to church, like I was just on the 24th of December, 31st of December. It was just this and making me so much stronger. And, and the fact that I, um, then the club also where I was tried to help me and, and because I could have easily said, oh, look, you're not well at the moment, go home. And that would have been even, I was scared of this because I think that would have been the, the, the worst. Isolate me, put me again on my own, which I always felt this way. But it was the opposite. The, the coach put me back in the team straight away, play. The player started to call me, text me, and, and they were like a, an extended family or families and I was missing. And uh, and then I started to feel better and better. And then something happened again with, uh, with my ex-partner <laughs> that put me back down. But because I was already strong enough with my faith, um, so the feelings that I had before wasn't as strong as, as, um, as it could have been. And, uh, and I, I managed to be strong and, and go through it, and, and I won. Yeah. I've got to say, th thank you for being so honest, Christian. And, and I think just by sharing what you have there, hopefully that will help other people, as I say, who might be going through some difficult times right now. And, and as we always say on our channel, you can always reach out to myself and Nick on the Chef United way through our direct message. We are always there, and we will listen. So, Christian... Thank you for sharing that. And I'm really pleased to hear that you're in a better place now. Thank you. I, I, I just, honestly, I would like to help. Um, I had to take a course to understand exactly why I was feeling like this, how to deal with, how to help people. And and I, obviously, you know, even though you feel better, sometimes there's time where you feel down. And and because you've been through this, through this you're scared to feel this way again. Mm. But I know how to deal with it. And, and I think, and I, I and I also trying to help other people. I help other, I help other people, and it's just a feeling, a good feeling, and to know that I can help. And and if I did help, and I'm, I hope I did. Honestly, yeah. it's amazing. What's next for Christian Nade? <laughs> well, I've got um, first. I was meant to have my um, like my last game. So the where I, where I started football when I grew up when I was five years old, the, the, the mayor contacted me and asked me to come and do my last game over there. Oh, uh, like test a testimonial. testimonial. Testimonial, yeah. yeah. I was meant to have my testimonial on the 22nd of May. Unfortunately, because of COVID, we had to, to uh, cancel it. But on the 26th of July, I'm going to America. There's um, 
cup called the ISCO, ISCO, ISCO Cup um, with uh, so many uh, big players who are retired now. Um, so it's last four months, it's in America. And after that, I'm, I think that's, that's me. Drop us some names. Who's going to be in America with you? <laughs> well, there, there's two names. There's two names. Well, I'm going to say the name of those people who already agreed. So there's Samuel Eto, there's Sanya. Um, I know they're trying to get, uh, I don't know if they got it, but Yaya Touré. They're trying to get Ronaldinho. I think they're trying to get Totti. <laughs> uh, they're trying to get Torres. They also uh, tried to get me, but I, uh, I said no. I said no. <laughs> I, was, I was talking with... Well, you give us all those names. We, we only want to speak to Christian Nade, despite all those names you've just mentioned. Yeah. Because you've got the most important player. Absolutely. Exactly. None, none of them played for Sheffield United. <laughs> exactly. So they're unlucky. And um, <laughs> I've got... Um, there's, I was speaking with Danny Weber, actually, and I said, why are you not coming? And he said, oh, he's, he's not into it anymore. But he said he's got some, some people, some friends of him will be there as well. So it's going to be a good four months. And then after that, that's me. That sounds a great way to kind of sign out of your footballing career, doesn't it? Playing with the likes of Ronaldinho. With, whew, can't Honest. even begin to talk about some of them names. It's great names, great yeah. list. And so it's going to do like a big draft, like in America. So it's going to be all the players there. We've got, we've got coaches like um, uh, Marco Simone, you know, Marco yeah, Simone, yeah. one of the coaches is um, Roberto Carlos, one of the coaches is Dunga, there's Marcel Desailly, there's Sol Campbell, um, I see they, they call as well, so those, those people will be there as coaches, so they're going to do a big draft, and they're going to pick who's going to be in, in which team, so hopefully I'll be in a team with uh, big players, and just play, train with them, and that would be, oh, be amazing for me. That will be fun. I hope it's not like when I was picked last for school PE. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to, to be honest, I don't really care if I get this last, before last. I'm not, I just want to to, uh, to be with around this kind of player and to see how how they were when they were a player, if they were different than me before the game, after the game, and see if, if I was doing something wrong. And just to be like around this player and like, you know, for, um, Totti was an amazing player. That's what you see on the pitch. But people are so different before the game or after the game. And that's kind of things that I want to see. If uh, Because there's more of people who told me that I wasn't a typical football player. Because after the pitch, I was just don't care. But do you anything. think, Christian, that, that might be useful for you in your next decision that you make? Because if you decided to get into football coaching or do anything that stayed in the game, there'll be a lot of players that actually, I'm sure, would are just like you. That's, to be honest, that's my next challenge. I would like to um, to be a coach at some point. That's some things that I would like to do. So getting some knowledge from those kind of players. Um, as I've been told also, then if um, if I wanted to retire, I could have a, a maybe maybe uh, a coach position over there just for because the thing lasts two years, four months, and then four months. So if I can get as much knowledge as I can, it would be amazing for me. That would be in. Would you one day like to come back to Sheffield United maybe in a coaching role? <laughs> Why not? I Why would not? Train 16 and 15, anywhere in Sheffield. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Um, would you like to come back and live in, in Sheffield as well, but not, not near Hillsborough? <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to go near yeah. them, them dodgy pubs. Yeah, to be honest, um, you know, I've been, since I'm 17, I've been living in a, almost in a spotlight. So, at some point, you just want to. Um, we are talking with my partner. She's actually expecting. Um, oh, congrats! Congratulations! Thank you. Um, after the tournament, live in a village in France where there's only 200 people, and just live there and just nothing at all. That's all I want. Just quiet. I, I get that. I get that. Yeah. And since since Nick started this channel, he's been thinking about that as well because he just yeah. so many people bother him, and he's just like, I need a day, guys. All right. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Christian, for being on. We really, Welcome. really appreciate it. We've done this recently. We've had a few uh, Blades on, uh, X Blades players on recently. And uh, we have started to give them kind of like a, a present for, to say thank you for coming on. If you can see this right now, can you? Well, can you see that? Yeah. So uh, uh, we've, we've got a really talented. Um, artist that's that's working with us 
and uh, she's drawn, uh, obviously, you scoring that famous goal against Arsenal. So we'd like to uh, post this out to you, if that's OK. Oh, that'd be amazing. Thank you. Love it. Good, good. Obviously, it's a, it's a great moment. I think every every blade that was there will remember that till the day that they die. So, uh, yeah, we, we really appreciate yeah. that. And, and we really appreciate you coming on today. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure. Well, Christian, I, I think one thing that I do definitely want to leave you with, and hopefully you'll take this away with you, in, you know, in 20, 30 years, I want you to try and, if you're ever having a bad day, just remember that the joy that you gave us, that, that goal you scored against Arsenal, I know it was only one second, only one fleeting moment, but it will remain with me. My mum was there. My dad was there. We shared a moment, my family, that was one of the greatest days watching a football club in our lives. And it was because of you. And we'll never forget it. And I just want to say thank you from all of us that were there. No, thank you. Thank you. It was, the best, it was the best day of my life as well, to be honest. Best on the football pitch, obviously. And if I managed to give some pleasure to you and your family, honestly, I'm, I'm very, very happy. You did. You did. And it will, it will be something that I'll never forget. And I'll tell my nephews about. And I love watching the goal on YouTube as well. <laughs> oh, just he's on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Go bookmarked on that, on that goal. <laughs> love that.